Okay, my fir first Bigfoot encounter was uh, when I was 11 years old. And uh, I was staying over at my friend's house and uh, we were gonna, he was gonna show me a bunch of deer they'd been seeing behind the barn. He said, hey, let's go camp out behind there. So, and I got permission from my parents and stuff. And uh, when dad drove me out there that night and we started packing up our stuff, it was about right around six o'clock. This is about, probably about in the month of the end of May. It's right before the, the summer break for our school. So we was all excited anyhow. We was gonna spend three months, you know, swimming and having fun and going to parties and stuff. So we was excited. So hey, let's come out there and stay overnight, man. See if we can see them deer in the morning. I want to show you this one. He's man, he's grown a, a rack in the velvet. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. We went out there. Her mom, his mom got me. Uh, we'll call we'll call him George. I don't like using his actual name. So George's mom got us all loaded up with food, snacks, and everything. So we went out there. The barn was under maybe like a hundred yards from the house, and we went out behind there. And uh, nice level spot out there. We set up and. I went and gathered the wood, he set up the tent, and we got all ready to have our camp out. And uh, so after we got the fire going and everything, I was standing there, we were talking, had our backs to it. Kind of, you know how you do when you're getting warm. All of a sudden, I turned around and looked here. It was warm, all right, and the vegetation was dry, and the fire started going out. And so, uh, oh my God, it started getting away from us. So we ripped our shirts off, started swatting the fire, but it took us about a half an hour or so. The time we got the fire out, well, the whole place is just, the whole valley is just back there filled with smoke. He said, well, I doubt if we see any deer in the morning, so um, what do you want to do? You want to just get back, you just want to get back in the house? I said, no, I came out here to camp out, man. You got any other place to camp out? He said, yeah, man, we got three acres here. He said, we could go on top of the hill, you know, we'll see a lot of ground from there. I said, okay, okay. And uh, so we get our stuff and we're trudging up this hill, and I'll tell you why after. After we got about halfway up, I, I was kind of wishing maybe, maybe we didn't go up because it was so high. And it was, it was about 70 some degrees, 75, and we started getting sweaty and hot. And it was real thick up there, briars and thorn trees. So we finally got to the top and he said, well, you go ahead and collect some more wood and I'll go ahead and set the tent back up again. He said, but this time we're gonna put water around the fire. I said, you got that right. So we got the wood up, started the fire and everything. He had the tent about set up. I went over to help him a little bit, stake it down. And then that's, we're, we're looking at right around close to seven o'clock. It didn't get dark till about eight. So uh, we're sitting around the fire and we're talking. We got our food out and we start roasting our, our hot dogs and hamburgers, marshmallows, whatever. So we, you know, and it got to be around 10, 11 o'clock. So by now it's dark and we're telling stories, you know, cutting up and talking about kids in school. Pretty soon it got to be like right around midnight. I'm getting a little tired. You want to turn in? Yeah, let's go turn in, man. So we went and got in our sleeping bags and laid there. You know how boys are. We talk some more. So about right around one o'clock or so, we, we're starting to get dozy. Okay, let's go to sleep, man. Okay, have a good night. So just laid my head down on the pillow, just closed my eyes, just started to drift, just started to drift off my heart. I said, snap, snap, snap. And by that time, he had heard it too. He looking at me. You said there wasn't supposed to be anybody up here, man. He goes, there is. No one even knows about this place, man. I've only been up here twice myself. I said, well, who is it? I don't know. Snap, snap, snap. And we're looking. I said, you want to go? No, you go. No. And all of a sudden, <laughs> uh, that's not natural because it was it was even deeper than I was. I made a sound. We're talking very low, like almost like a guttural sound. And uh, I go, man, that sounds like a big man or something out there. He goes, uh, yeah, um, I don't know who that could be because there's no one up here. And he says, if no one knows we're camping out. He goes, wait a minute, my brother, he knows we're camping out. He goes, you like to play tricks. I go, oh, <laughs> so it made all sense. His brother's up here trying to scare us, you know, trying to scare the boys up here. So, but the thing of it is, he didn't really know we went up on top of the hill. But anyhow, maybe he figured it out because he probably seen, seen the fire. So I figured, oh, he probably seen the fire. So anyhow, he goes, let's get out, let's go out and scare him. I goes, okay. And just, just I said, okay. Boom. A hand come down, hit that tent, and it hit my friends, uh, George, we're calling him, on the head. He goes, ow, man, I hurt. He called his, called his brother by name. He said, I hurt, Dave. 
And uh, I just, I kind of got down. If I hope he don't hit me, just I'm thinking that to myself, boom! It hit the tent again, and it hit me in the head. Now I'm on the other side of the tent with my head down toward the ground. I'm like, this is an old army tent. This is an army tent. You can't see through that during the day. How did this, well, whoever, how did they know where to swing for our heads at? I'm thinking about that. He goes, I know it's him. I say, because on the count of three, let's go out and scare him. He goes, one, two, three. I rolled out of that tent like a big dummy. I rolled out of that tent. I jumped up, thinking it's his brother on the other end of the tent. I mean, he's he trying to scare us, you know. I go, rah. And as I do that, and I'm looking in front of me, I see the three, four foot, well, all I see the massive hair. And I have to look up. And I look at this thing's eyes, it was pure black, and it was looking down at me. And I knew it was no man standing there. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And I, th I took a couple steps back, because I'm, I'm 11 years old, I am scared out of my wits. And I literally, to be honest with you, I about, I about peed myself right there because I'm totally freaked out at this point. And just like I took a step back, he, he kind of looked, he twisted his head and looked at me, and he takes off running. But he didn't run away. He ran past me out over across the ridge. And as he goes past me, I could literally see, because the only thing that was light out there was the glowing embers of the fire, because you know, the fire had died down by that time. It's about 1, 1, 3 in the morning. But they were still lit. I could just see a little, little glow around the campfire. And I, this thing ran and ran right on the edge of the campfire. And I could see it illuminated it, it enough to where I could see this thing, the hair. And I could literally see muscles on this leg as it ran away. Which you would naturally assume if it's a natural creature, you expect to see muscles. I never thought about it. maybe somebody was in a Bigfoot suit trying to scare us. But let me tell you what, as fast as this thing ran, there was no way there was anything on the Bigfoot suit, and no other man besides that. Who's going to come up, even if you know they're up there camping, who's going to put a Bigfoot suit on, make yourself look eight foot tall, climb up a hill just to scare a couple boys? Who's going to do that? I guarantee you, we got hot and sweaty walking up with our regular clothes on, so no one is going to go be up there trying to scare us. Whatever I seen, it was, it was a real, real creature. That's all I know. And it took off running over there. As soon as it did that, my friend was looking out at the door of the tent. He's still inside. He never came out with me. And he goes, oh my God, Dave, that was Bigfoot. I looked down, he goes, Bigfoot? What's, who's that? He goes, there. He goes, here. And he threw a flashlight to me. He took his flashlight. Camping was over with for the night. We took off that way. Bigfoot goes this way. We took off this way going down over that hill, and we're booking it. And we got down, we're running so fast, and we got down to the fence, he jumped over the fence and rolled down the hill, and so I couldn't even see the fence. It's a dark time. And so I'm gonna keep on running, running and I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm at that corner, because it, it was a corner right there. Maybe I know I'm on the other side. I just kept on running. I hit that fence and I flopped over, and I did, my foot got caught in the fence. So here I am thinking maybe Bigfoot turned around, maybe he decided to come back and, and try, to, uh, try to get us. And I'm trying to pull my foot out of that fence and I couldn't do it. And so finally I, I pulled my foot out of my boot that I had on. I pulled my foot out of the boot and I ran back to the house, one, one boot on and, the, and, and a pair of socks and I'm, I'm running back, I didn't care. All I wanted to do was get back in that house. So bang, bang, bang on the doors. His sister, her, her bedroom right close to the door, the kitchen right there. So she came to the door, her, uh, and then we'll call her Nancy. And uh, she goes, oh, boy, you scared the dark. No, 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 man, let us in, let us in. Okay, okay, what's going on? Man, we seen Bigfoot up there. She goes, Bigfoot, and she starts laughing. And she goes, what kind of, what, what are you guys doing? Drinking some of that Boone's Farm up there? I knew y'all was drinking, wasn't you? No, are you kidding me? I said, this thing hit, hit us in the head, it hits the, uh, hit George in the head, and it hit me in the head. <laughs> she hollered and laughed. She goes, man, you guys are good, man. You guys are good. Y'all are really high, aren't you? You guys are higher than a kite, aren't you? Bigfoot hitting you in the head, man. And I'm like, oh, yeah, wow, man. So then his brother, who we thought 
might have been the one scaring us, ran down the stairs in his pajamas. He goes, what's going on? You guys know what time it is? So we knew automatically it wasn't him up there. So he was the only one who knew he was camping out. Now who else would have known? No one else did. So anyhow, um, the next morning at the, at the breakfast table, his dad came down, we were all sitting there. Oh, I heard you boys had a, had a run in with the, with the big hairy creature, huh? Kind of chuckled a little bit. Uh, yeah. I said, and it hit us on the head too. Put his head down. He looked up at George, his son. He said, he's back. I said, ah. Uh, and I just looked over at George. I goes, who's back? He goes, Bigfoot. Do you mean you knew that there was something like this out here and you had us camping? He goes, dude, that was six months ago. I thought it was long gone by now. I said, it looked like it was long gone. Man, he ended up hitting us in the head. And who knows what else it wanted to do. Maybe he wanted to kill us. I said, what the heck? If I knew that was that, I said, I wouldn't make, um, come down here camping. He goes, settle down, Dave. Settle down. It's okay. It's okay. He said, uh, you boys feel like going up there and checking the place out. And besides that, we got to get, get the tent and your stuff up there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, after breakfast. So after breakfast, we went up the hill. And uh, first thing he did, he walked over by the tent. He looked down and go, yep, look at that. The little 15 inch, 15, 16 inch track, about, about seven, eight inches wide, had three toes at the end of it, which I, I, I find out through, you know, through the years, I found out that's kind of unusual. Normally there's like, they say five toes, but this had three toes. Well, we have five. I don't understand why there's three toes. Said, Dude, it's a creature of some sort. Yeah, I got it, I got that. So um, my dad came and, came and got me. I, so I told him the story. He didn't believe me. He didn't believe me at all. But anyhow, let me finish the story of being on top of the hill. We followed the tracks. There were 12 of them. He had me lead because he seen, I knew I seen where it went. So I'm following the tracks, and they're about like maybe seven, ten feet apart. And they're about, oh, in the ground, it's probably around an inch and a half, maybe two inches, a certain place, depending on the hardness of the ground. And, I, and as I went across, and I, and I got to the last track, and where there's supposed to be, a, there's, a, there's still, it's an old logging road, and there's more path to go. The track stopped. Uh, there's nothing to the right or the left. There's ne definitely nothing ahead of us. I look back, just following the same track. That's all there was. Now, my mind's trying to correlate. Where's the next track at? So I said, uh, it's Dave, is there a problem? I goes, yeah, there's a problem. He goes, why? I goes, there ain't no more track. He, what do you mean there ain't no more track? So he came. He's about like maybe five, six yards behind me. He walked up and looked at me. He was looking over. He goes, what the? <laughs> uh, he's looking around. He said, boy, just span out. We're going to try to see where, the, where this thing went. It went on circle 20, 30 yards. Couldn't never see nothing. Well, there was one tree. Or maybe it jumped into a tree. Well, the nearest tree was about 20 feet away. And it was only about this big around. And there was no marks on it, nothing. Just, 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 just looked like any tree that you would see in this, this wood back here. No indication that that thing, you know, jumped anywhere or jumped to a tree or nothing. So I said, what do you make out of that? He looked, he bent down and got on one knee. And I'll never forget the words he said. He goes, boys, I've been hunting these woods ever since I was knee high to grasshopper. And I've never seen nothing like this. He said, but one thing I do know, tracks don't those words stuck in my mind for well up to this, this, this day 40 50 years from that and all during this time I've been trying to think what is this what is this creature and where did it come where, where did it come from how did it get here what's it I don't understand I always thought you know the Bible tells us it was God made man and woman in the garden of Eden he made Adam and Eve didn't say anything about making Bigfoot anywhere.